How you doing, guys? So, um, I, this video today, I want to go over contradictory statements that I've heard people say. And the video I'm making today, this, this will kind of go along with uh, what people say to try to make an excuse as to not believe that the whole world has been forgiven of sins. These are the statements that I've heard. <clears throat> Start now. This will be a first contradictory statement. We all know what a contradiction is, the definition of it. But I've heard this being said before. The world isn't being charged. Well, this is actually recent. Recently, I've heard this the last couple of days. The world isn't being charged of sins, but a person will be forgiven of all trespasses through simple faith. Now, there's people that will hear this statement and will actually accept it as truth. They, they will accept this as, oh, okay, that's very profound what you said. That, that makes a whole lot of sense. Now, the person that I was talking to that said this was trying to persuade me that they agreed with me that the world isn't being charged with sins. But then proceeded, as I said, to say this last bit right here. Now, if you aren't careful, you'll fall for this. If you're not paying attention, if you're not listening clearly, you'll hear somebody say this and you may even accept it as being true. Now, this is where people get into trouble when they add to the scriptures, things that are not there. There is no scripture in the Bible that says you'll be forgiven of all trespasses through simple faith. There's not one scripture that says this. I had a person tell this to me. He has a channel has over a hundred people watching them, told me this is true, that a person will be forgiven of all trespasses through simple faith. Asked him where the scripture was, couldn't find it. Yet, why do people listen to this? Why do they believe this? Why do they accept this? This part is in the Bible. World isn't being charged with sins. That's, that's in the Bible. What is 2 Corinthians 5.19, right? But this is not in the Bible. And that's how Satan gets people right there. You're not listening cl uh, clearly. You're not taking what the Bible says. You add to it. You add to it. I've heard people, I'll give you another example. This isn't have to do with the contradictory statements, but I've heard someone talk about the gap theory. I used to agree with that until I realized that get the gap theory is not even in the Bible. What these people are saying is a theory. None of that information is in the Bible. None of it. The gap theory is basically uh, people are saying there was a civilization on earth. I think that it's, it was supposed to be angels. Angels lived on earth. Um, before we did, or something like that. They, 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 they insert it there. That's why it's called the gap. And I said, none of that is even in... I mean, uh, Gene Kim used to say this. There's another guy I watched. He used to say this. They still talk about it now. But I came to a realization, uh, I think it was at the end of 2018, and I was just like, that's not even in the Bible. The gap there's not in there. There's nothing in there talking about angels. There was a nation of angels on the earth. And... Um, Whatever Satan was, God had made Satan in charge of them. I mean, Lucifer, whatever, at the time. And then God got mad and destroyed everybody, and that's where the darkness comes in. Because a lot of people read in to Genesis where it talks about, in the beginning, God made the, the world, all that stuff. They go to the part where it talks about darkness, and they said that means destruction. See, the darkness there, it means destruction. That means God destroyed something there. That's why there's darkness there. That doesn't even make any sense. But again, that's what people do when they insert things into the Bible that aren't there. So, this, this statement right here, if you aren't careful, if you're not listening careful enough, you will be persuaded by stuff like this. You'll accept it as biblical or something like that. And half of it is. That's how Satan operates. He inserts. He's going to put some Bible in there. I personally think Satan's going to... If I had a statement, you know... That would probably be more 
akin to what Lucifer would say, what Satan would say, it would be something probably that is 99% true. It wouldn't be like this, really. It would probably be 99% true with one word or that, that 1% that's untrue. That's how, he, how close he wants to be to God. He wants to be 99%, but in order to get his deception in there, he puts that 1% deception in there. Here it is right here. Um, I'm going to list some other things that I've heard that don't make any sense. But again, why, why did this person even say this? Because they don't want to believe God forgave all the world's sins at the cross. They don't want to believe it. Um, why even insert that whole forgive through simple faith thing? Uh, God's not charging the world's sins, but you'll be forgiven of all trespasses through simple faith. Their thinking, as far as I, when I talked to the person, was telling me basically, God is not charging your sins now, but when you die, it's like God turns it off. The offer's good for now. But when you die, okay, God, God is not charging your sins. And now you are going to hell for your sins. This is why they insert, you'll be forgiven of all trespasses through simple faith. So their focus is still on, they still believe a person needs to be forgiven of all trespasses. Give me one second. just want to make sure this thing is uh, recording. You know what I'm saying? This, that type of person, that statement I just had up there, that type of person, his focus is still on a person needs to be forgiven of all trespasses. They don't believe the whole world's been forgiven of all trespasses. They think certain people have been forgiven of all trespasses, but not everybody. So that's his, that's his focus. That's why he had to say that. He, he, he admits, oh, the, girl, the world isn't being charged with sins. But again, like the gap theory thing, the same thing. They insert things there that aren't there. They try to say, now God is in charge of the world of sins now, but when you die, then God charges the world, charges your sins to you. Where is that in the Bible? Because they don't want to accept 2 Corinthians 5.19. That it simply explains God is not charging the world of sins. Case closed. That means what it means. Anything to do with sin. I can't go to hell for my sin. God isn't angry for my sin. And here's what I'm saying. Anger, I'm telling you, of course the sins I do are bad. But God is not charging me of my sins. He can't even be angry at what I'm doing because he's already casted judgment on his son. The judgment for sins are placed on Jesus Christ. Not me. So why would God be angry at me for my sins when my sins were already placed on Jesus Christ at the cross more than 2,000 years ago? This is what people will not accept is true. They won't accept it. They still believe God is mad at America for sin and we're being punished with the coronavirus because of sin. No, that's not what's going on. It's not what's going on. God is not angry at the world for sin. God is not going to punish you for your sin. God is not charging the world of your sin. You will not go to hell for your sin. You will not die in your sins. Do you see where I'm getting at? Everything regarding sin has been dealt with already. People, man, most mankind, and I truly believe, probably 90% will not believe that. They won't. They can't. They won't believe it. Uh, here's another contradictory statement I've had. I've heard. Um, it goes back with the Second Corinthians 5.19. The world isn't being charged of sins, but a person will go to hell for their sins if they don't believe the gospel. 
So again, this is pretty much the same as the other one. Very close, except for the other one said faith. You'll be forgiven your trespasses through faith. This is this one, this guy, the person that told me this, uh, this was uh, last year I heard somebody tell me this. Their whole big concern, again, was you, you, the world's not being charged with sins, but at the same time, you'll go to hell for your, for your sins if you don't believe the gospel. So again, does that person believe they have been granted relief of payment of their sins? Do they believe that every man, woman, child, everybody on earth, every human being, do they believe that all mankind, all humanity has been granted relief of payment for their sins? The answer would be no. They don't believe that. That's why they say what they say. Here's another. This is going to be a really short video, by the way. I'm just putting up some statements I've heard. Um, trying to remember what I heard with this. It's kind of the same thing, but I think there's a little bit difference to it. Um, hmm. Oh, yeah. Got it. Christ died for the world's sins, but a person will still die in their sins unless they believe the gospel. So if you notice so far, guys, with last this is the third statement of course have you noticed a recurring theme in all these statements a pattern the pattern is the person that is making this statement and every single one is saying that the problem is sins you see what i'm saying the problem is sins this one right here christ died for the world's sins they this person told me this again this was last year um they told me that Christ died for the world's sins. And then they turned around and said, but a person will still die in their sins unless they believe the gospel. So do they really believe Christ died for their sins? If they're still saying you'll die for your sins. See, see how I get it? They say Christ died for their sins. But yet they turn around and say now a person won't. Uh, sorry. A person will die in their sins. Unless they believe the gospel. This don't make no sense, did it? Does it? Why would I die for my sins if Christ already died for my sins? How can Christ die for my sins, yet Christ say, now Brandon, you're going to die in your sins unless you believe the gospel. I would say, didn't you already die for my sins? Didn't you already do that, God? Didn't you already die on the cross for my sin? That's what you did, right? You died for my sins. Everybody sins, right? That's what you did? Then I can't die for my sins. Then what you're saying is illogical. I, I would even say that to God. I would be like, I'm not going to die in my sins. You already died for my sins. And that's what people are saying. That's what they're arguing is, no, God's going to tell you, you're going to die in your sins. I'm going to tell God, no, I'm not. You already died for my sins. You already died for my sins. I'm not dying for my sins. That's it. I'm not dying for something that has already been forgiven. I'm not dying for something that has already been paid for. I'm not dying for any of that. Christ already took my sins before I was ever even born, placed it onto himself, shed his blood, which was the forgiveness of sins, died for those sins, was buried, came back to life the third day. 
So no, I'm not going to die for my sins today. Yet yeah, people will try to get you to believe this. So guys, that's all I wanted to talk about today. Really short video. But you got to make sure you're, um, let, just listen to people. They'll, they'll, they'll reveal what they really believe. They'll, they'll tell you what they really believe. And the guys that I've heard these statements from, I thought, I promise you, I thought that, it, that they believed the whole world's forgiven of sins. The longer I listen to them, I start to hear them say, no, 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 a person isn't forgiven of sins. Per See, when I say, when, when Trey Searcy, Bobby Fautner, uh, any of us, say the world is forgiven of sin. And there's many people, guys, I know there's more people out there preaching the true gospel. I just I just haven't haven't reached out to you. I don't know who you are. But if you're, you're preaching the true gospel, you're preaching that the world's been forgiven of all sins, people are going to see that as foolish. That's just the way it is. I've actually had somebody tell me that. They said they're stupid. They literally told me, they're like, that's stupid Christ forgave all the world's sin. Say that to me. Because that just means I, I, I'm just going to get away with everything I do. I mean, if I've been forgiven all my sins, I'm going to get away with it. I mean, you're not really getting away with it because somebody was punished for your actual sins. But yeah, in the sense that right now you're not going to be punished for anything you do. Yeah. And they just looked at me like I was crazy. Just like, you're, you're crazy. You're stupid. So, people can claim they're saved all day. But when you say anything about Christ being forgiven the whole world sins at the cross, they're going to look at you crazy. It don't matter what you're part of. You, you can be part of your, your grace assembly thing on Facebook, your face, your, your group. Say the world's been forgiven of all sins. You're going to be kicked out real fast. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. It's sad, but that's just the way it is. I, I'm, I promise you guys, we are a remnant of a remnant. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. We, we definitely, the belief of us just believing what the Bible clearly says is something that so few people believe. I don't understand it. I, I don't get it. They, they can understand the dynamics of forgiveness when they go pay for something at the grocery store. They wouldn't like somebody in, in line to come out and say, hey, you, you haven't paid. And the, per, the person's like, I did pay. I gave you $5 for that. I know you did, but you still haven't paid. <laughs> That's when they're okay with the, the, the definition of forgive and stuff like that then. But when it comes to the Bible, oh no, oh no, oh no, uh-uh, that's different, that's different. They just don't, you see what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm be honest, guys, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm tired of it myself, trying to, I'm trying to be patient with people, but it, 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 good, it does get very, very tiring because I know we, the people that really believe the gospel, are up against the, the entire world. You see what I'm saying? You're up against the entire world and the world's full. They believe in whatever. The next thing they're going to believe is aliens and anything else. You know what I'm saying? You're up against just imagination, Satan himself, all this stuff. And people looking at you like, why should we believe you? Why should I believe you? First, they have no faith in the Bible. They, they have no belief in the Bible and God's word. Second, even from God's word, you still have to be logical. You have to go along with what it says. You can't be illogical. See what I'm saying? You got to be logical, reasonable. Go with what it says. Don't take, don't add to it. Don't take away from it. See what I'm saying? People should be glad we're not living in revelations where it warns people. It tells people if you do that, God will add to you the plagues that are written in, in that book in Revelations. And they'll take away your part out of the um, book of life. But people are doing that all the time. I mean, I mean again, that, that warning, whatever, is only written. It's only talking about revelations, right? You shouldn't add to any other books of the Bible. But I'm just simply saying today, people are adding to 1 Corinthians, Romans. They're adding things in there that don't need to be there. And what if, what if God had put a warning and said any books, any books, you add to anything or take away from any of my word in any of the books, I'll add to you some plagues. I'll take away your part out of the book of life. And it be a lot of people messed up, right? I would have been gone. I've done that. I, I told you I did my testimony. I know I've added to God's word. I've specifically added to revelations. I know I have. I'm not talking about writing in there. But I've added to what God has said. But it was, again, Truth Time Radio 
that help me to rightly divide, and I thank God I'm not in Revelations because I will be having that curse fall upon me if I was in Revelations. But guys, I hope this video helps you out. Please listen to people when they're talking to you. You'll be able to hear, and uh, keep keep giving the true gospel. Keep being trying. Keep being patient with people. That's what we do. You see what I'm saying? It, 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 like I said. I'm just a man. I, I get mad. I get angry. I get frustrated with people. I just recently got frustrated with my own family on some things, but I had to let it go. I had to just say, just just let it go. See what I'm saying? It wasn't even concerning the Bible. Or it was concerning the Bible, but it wasn't concerning specifically the gospel. It was just some simple things, but I had to let that frustration go. I had to let it pass. And just, and just get over it. Because there's people that are just not, even your own family, are just not going to believe. They're just not going to believe. That's just the way it is. All right, guys. Have a great day.